Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rekal Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone, which rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the whole for the day. All right. So, Brother Azariah here with the Pittsburgh GMS camp. So, like it while I move my mic. And um, I just really want to touch on. Um, I saw the Avengers a couple of days ago, you know, so spoiler warning um, for anybody who haven't seen the movie Avengers. I'm going to be going into some of the aspects of the movie. Um, what was it? Avengers Endgame. Yes, the name of it. Just going into a few aspects of the movie. Some of the things I saw, you know, from a spiritual perspective. Um, so if you like I said, if you haven't seen the movie, you might want to click off of it because I'm going to go into uh, some of those things. All right, so um, basically, uh, I want to touch on how in the movie, um, let's see what part I want to start on. I guess the part I'll just go straight into is the part towards the end when all the uh, all the all the people, Salaki, so when they used the Infinity Stone to bring all the people who was uh, who was destroyed back, you know. Um, and Thanos, you know, um, traveled in time to this, you know, to the to the location of where the stones were gathered to basically take over the stones, you know. And basically, it was just remind, it was reminiscent, or the scriptures uh, came to mind of when Yahweh Shai comes back, you know, on the planet Earth, and uh, all the nations of the world fight against him because all the heroes, you know, the Wakandans and you know, all the little different heroes, they came back. Oh, so lucky, I was just, you know, brothers is rolling in the spirit. The uh, the elder apostle, you know, Ram Lab has a video going. I just watched the Dallas camp. A couple of videos I want to watch, so I'm just, uh, just going into this briefly. Um, oh, so lucky. But basically, you know, um, with this, with this thing here kicking off, you know, B-52 bombers being deployed to Iran, you know, and there's this dude talking about war is imminent, you know, and we know things are going to kick off here uh, soon, you know, who knows how soon it's all in the hands of the most high, how soon, but, uh, you know, if uh, the spirit was on the Apostle Tahar to label this um, year of Karagma, <clears throat> so like you for yawning so much, so like you. but, um, you know, this was a label year of Karagma, you know, and um, we know typically when Esau, uh, as the pattern that Esau has showed us, is when he sets something forth, he usually pulls some type of uh, false flag in order to, to justify the thing that he's pushing forth. And, um, you know, some major event is going to happen, you know, in the U.S. Or, or something of that nature in order to trigger, you know, them pushing forth this uh, Mark of the Beast, this RFID microchip technology, which is the Mark of the Beast. Do not take the RFID microchip or the Near Field Communication, the NFC. Do not take any forms of the RFID microchip technology because it's the Mark of the Beast. You know, if you take it, you will be destroyed. There's no salvation for you. If you take it, you're making Esau, the so-called white man, your Lord and Savior. And you will be killed for such things. The Most High will destroy you. All right, so moving along, um, back to the point, like I said, you know, towards the end of the movie of the Avengers, uh, which is, you know, it just reminded me of how World War Three is going to be going on, you know, and they're all going to be fighting. But when the Lord comes, you know, which there were many similarities between when Yahweh Shai comes back. And uh, which is prophesied, and when and when uh, uh, Thanos came on the scene. So let's just read Second Ezra thirteen, and Mike start at one. Mm, I started two. And lo, there there arose a wind from the sea that it moved all the waves thereof, and I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. So this wave, this wind. Uh, uh, blowing against the wave, you know, this wind is like uh, destruction, you know, and the waves can represent uh, people, you know. Verse three, and be and be and I beheld and lo, that man was strong with the thousands of heaven. And this is talking about who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, who we know his Hebrew name to be Yahweh Shai, 
uh, and Christ being uh, meaning anointed uh, in Hebrew is Hamashiach or Mashayak. Ha meaning the and Mashayak meaning the anointed. So Ha Mashayak, the Christ. All right, and I beheld and lo, that man, Yahweh Shai, waxed strong with the thousands of heaven, and when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him. You know. Revelation 1 and 7, behold, he cometh with clouds, the chariots, the identified flying objects, not UFOs, IFOs, the, the so-called spaceships, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so, Amon. All the things trembled that were seen under him, and whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, they all burned and heard his voice, like as the earth felleth when it filleth the fire. He was burning these folks up, man. And after this, multi after this, I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. You know, and the Shemayim up in the heavens, the word um, Mayam, which is a, a root of the word Shemayam, uh, Mayam represents water, and Shem means pertaining to, so pertaining to the waters. When it speaks about the heavens, the Shemayim, it's it's, it means pertaining to the waters. You know, that's why it says in uh, Genesis, he separated the waters from the waters because there's water up there, which is also why they practice uh, and in water when they're doing uh, outer space simulations, because there, there's actually water up there. So that's why I get I believe that's why it says he came out of the sea. Verse six, but I beheld and lo, he had graved himself a mountain and flew upon it. And that mountain is just talking about how big the ship was. And if you've seen the movie. The ship that, flint, that Thanos flew on was a big ship. It was pretty, pretty sizable, you know. Verse seven. But I would have seen. But I would have seen the region or place, where out the hill was graven and could not. So the ship was so big, he thought that he picked up a mountain off the ground and 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 flew flew up in the sky on it. But no, it was just how big it was. And after this, I beheld and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid and yet durst fight. So this is when they try to fight against Yahweh Shai and which is, you know, they, they fought against Thanos in like manner, you know. It was one of them things where you could see the big ship and, the, you know, the ship was raining down fire and shooting stuff up. But people, you know, they were still fighting them, you know. The difference is they're not going to win inside in real life. In the movie, you know, Esau could create his own fantasy. In real life they're not gonna win and lo as he saw the violence of the multitude that came he neither lifted up his hand nor held sword nor any instrument of war but only i saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire and out of his lips a flaming breath and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests but the point is um you know they're gonna uh they're going to try to subdue him. You know, they're going to try to fight him. You know, they're already are going to be gathered. Let's see. Lock in. Maybe I need to do this mic a little bit. It was making a lot of noise. Joel 3. And nine, proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears, let the weak say I am strong. And that's what's happening right now. All the, all the, all the heathens. You know, you so-called white people, you different nations are all being uh, uh, gathered up together, man, you know, to fight, you know, beat your, uh, assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen and gather yourselves together round about thither cause thy mighty ones to come down. O Yahweh, let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Yahweh Shapat, which means the most highest decision or the most highest uh, judgment. Therefore will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. 
Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of Yahweh is near in the valley of decision. The sun and moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord Yahweh also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But Yahweh will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. You know, so this is all talking about the end time. This is all talking about the war, quote unquote, the war in heaven, you know. War in heaven, you know, people don't understand the war in heaven. I think it was actual uh, angels, you know, the, or, or Satan, the, the, the so-called angels that rebelled. But the angels are not in rebellion. This is talking about people, you know. Revelation 12 and 7, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels. The dragon, right? The dragon is represent representative of an entity, you know? The great red dragon, uh, Esau. Matter of fact, let's see here. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So let's go to Revelation 13. You know, I'm going to just do verse, verse 3. I'll start at verse 3. And I saw one of his heads uh, as if it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. This is talking about the Roman Empire because Rome was taken down, you know, but the wound was healed when, when, uh, Esau's kingdom was resurrected uh, starting around the time of uh, the Renaissance period, around the time of the conquest of the Americas, you know, somewhere around that time, you know. All right. It was when the Rome came back, you know, think of look, look at the Roman Catholic Church, you know, Rome is here. Rome, the, the Neo Neo Rome, New Rome exists, the kingdom of the Edomites, the so-called white people. Verse 4, and they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And this represents America. Because for the longest, people were looking like, Who's able to make war with America? Because America had the greatest military technology. You know? So when you talk about the dragon and say, Who was able to make war with him? You know? You don't see some uh, red red horned devil somewhere, you know, fighting and everybody's marveling after him. No, this is talking about uh, NATO and the EU. You know, Esau's system of power, the so-called white man's system of power. You know. All right, let's see, verse seven, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. You know. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of, of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leave in the captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. You know, but this is just letting you know, you know, that the things that the dragon has, has portrayed out in the planet earth, particularly touching the apple of the Lord's eye, which is the so-called blacks, Latinos and Native Americans, the children of Israel. It's going to be played back out upon him, upon his people, you know, and the people of the dragon are Edom, Edom, Esau, the so-called white people, you know, the Lord willing, this is making sense. I didn't even plan on going into these things. You know, I just want to kind of correlate how that war that they were having in the movie in, in Avengers Endgame just reminded me of when they're going to try to fight against Yahweh Shai. All the forces of the of the heathen, all the forces of the earth are going to gather together to come against the Lord. You know, and uh, the difference between that movie and real life is they, they're not going to win. You know, they're not going to win. Yeah, I wish I was going to win. And the only, you know, and like there was a quote that was made in the movie where uh, Thanos said, uh, the only people who are going to remember the way the world used to be. Um, oh, basically, he was, he was saying nobody's going to remember the way the world used to be. At first, he was thinking that, you know. 
anyway, only the elect are going to remember. The rest of the people are not going to really remember, you know. They're not going to remember what happened. You know, so much so that they're going to look upon Esau and say this. Isaiah 14. This will also show you what this is talking about. This is not just talk. This is not talking about Satan. Okay. Uh, verse Isaiah 16 and 12. How art thou fallen from he heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of the most high. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. And he did, you know, he did sit on us, you know, he did rest on, on, on the children of Israel, man. You know? I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to a low condition, to the sides of the pit, to a very low condition. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the city thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners? They're going to be asking these type of questions because they're going to be looking like, oh, I can't believe that. Y'all mean to tell me these little weak dudes, you know, was running the world? Oh, man, I don't even, yeah, I don't even know. I don't know about that, bro. That's just these little weak people, these little base, you know, lowest of the low cavemen, they were running the earth? They would, they cause nations to tremble. Are you kidding me? You know? <clears throat> so anyway, man, this is talking about people, man. You know, see, and if you keep going, it talks about prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their father. So, so the angels got children now. Satan got kids. Where does it talk about the son of Satan? You know? Y'all bugged out, man. The angels haven't didn't rebel. The scriptures is written in code, and they're talking about something else, you know? Talking about something else. But anyway, you know, I'm, I'm going to end it there, man. I feel like I'm rambling on a little bit. Lord willing, this is edifying. I'm going to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh. Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. Ba'ashem, Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of the Great Millstone. These blessings and salutations to the hopefully elect. That I'm going to tell the one.